Okay, so here's the uh, desktop recording version of my presentation. You're not going to see me running around doing a quick setup and uh, showing the equipment. Let me uh, pause this, back this up here. Uh, here's a shot of the Dumbbell Nebula we took earlier in the uh, year when it was uh, warm out. And I, I really just made a quick couple brief comments about that, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. Uh, of course, in the winter, we had a situation like this where we had snow blocking the fence. I had to dig through, and uh, the door was actually frozen shut, so I didn't do much winter observing. This is after was quite a bit of snow melt. We had record snowfall in Michigan this year. So uh, basically for three months we didn't do any observing. So what did I do? I decided to test observing from a warm house, breaking the rules. Now, conventional wisdom tells us we shouldn't look through a closed window, uh, which is true because this, the glass in the window will distort. And we shouldn't look through an open window because uh, currents are going to, turbulence and currents from the warm air inside will go out of the window and ruin your observing. So I wanted to test that and find out what's what's going on. So basically what I found was, um, I'm going to give the quick summary, I found that it's best to observe it from indoors uh, using an alt as tripod, a small uh, telescope with a small aperture, at least for me this is what seemed to work because I'm using a small window to observe through. Uh, and I want to put my two tripod legs against the wall, as you can see those two are against the wall. Uh, reason for that is I can tilt the tripod toward the window. It won't tilt as much if the legs, two legs are against the wall and uh, the legs will actually rest against the sill and it almost have like a five point uh, suspension there. Also notice there's a spreader at the bottom of the tripod that's holding the legs constant. You want a tripod that is sturdy, can be, uh, has a spreader uh, or some way of keeping the legs from spreading unnecessarily and you're going to use a fairly light telescope, more of a grab-and-go telescope. I observed for about 90 minutes inside most of the times when I did test obser observation sessions. I only did about three or four so this is uh, these notes are based on the few sessions I had. And once the room cooled down to about 55 degrees I'd close up. I'd simply bring the telescope in by lowering the, the back leg bring the telescope away from the window and shut the window and in 15 seconds I'd be ready to go to bed in my pajamas and I could observe in my pajamas if I wanted to. So I could uh, set up and tear down in 15 seconds. This gave me more time to observe. Here's the summary of the points there. A strong tripod with a good friction clutch because the tripod will be at an angle. Hopefully a decent friction clutch. A good camera tripod will work with a light um, camera. You want to avoid EQ mounts I think because you don't have the space for it and uh, weak, weak tripods. Here's a picture of some observing that we did. Uh, we were looking at Comet Panstars. You can see the, the two telescopes in the middle. We have a big uh, Smith Newtonian, uh, which is affectionately called Big Bertha, and also a small Newtonian, which I made back in 1977 that are being used in the middle. The Newtonians, you have to have your eye near the, near the front of the telescope, so I don't recommend them. Also, you'll have tube currents going up the telescope. So I, I wouldn't recommend those types. The two types of telescopes I'd recommend you can't really see here. The one in the front is actually the binocular telescope being used by the Rick on the far left there. And the guy in the back is uh, Dr. Timothy Day using uh, some actually 10 by 50 binoculars where we're scanning for comet pan stars. The binoculars or small refractor I think are more ideal. At least that's my opinion. A few members of the club have used uh, dabs, but I didn't, haven't gotten much feedback from them. They've tried had problems, you know, getting the right elevation using a table. One guy said he had a problem. The other um, member of the club hasn't told me much about what he used for observing outside. I'm, I'm assuming he opened the window very low or had the telescope across the room, which could cause some problems possibly in what you're looking at. Here I have uh, some drapes, some basic drapes, which are really to keep out the sunlight at one time, uh, so it'd be darker in the room. But I'm using them kind of like as a thermal drape. They're just basically material. And uh, I open the upper sash of the window. I'm looking from the 30 to 60 degree range. My views are limited to a few constellations because of the limit of how much you can look at. Um, and I found that instead of blocking the heat and improving seeing, which does happen a bit with a curtain and blocking the amount of air going out of the window, uh, more importantly, it blocks stray light from outside, nearby street lights, you know, for city viewing. And, and you're in a darker environment, and your eyes can adapt better, and you don't have as much light hitting your eyes. You don't have to worry about that. So I found that the, the, the drapes actually have a benefit of uh, creating a more of a dark environment to view from, at least from direct light. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's a typical view out of the, my uh, back window of my house looking toward the um, 
looking toward the east, and you can see that I can only see like a constellation, at least from this wide angle shot I took here. You can see I have typical problems. I have a small tree in the back with branches. I have um, some lines and stuff, so there's going to be some problems in your viewing depending on your location. Okay, so uh, like I said, you want to adjust. You can see I have the legs adjusted against the window. I'm looking up. I'm also using a block that was to block indirect light from solar observing. I have this uh, cardboard blocking uh, piece of uh, actually fiber poster board that I've used that I cut holes in on my little Vixen uh, telescope binocular setup. And uh, that was to block light and to block heat. It worked okay, but of course I, I can't view what I'm looking at. I'm looking at wide field and kind of looking around or looking below the telescope because I don't have a, a hole cut for a finder or anything. So I can't set up the scope with that. But I tried that in part, as part of the experiment. Here you can see the uh, solar uh, shield of course, this isn't a solar filter to safely view the sun. You have to use safe solar filters. I have white light filters that I built that I can put in, in front of the, the telescope when I'm doing solar viewing. I'm not showing those here. So you want to use safe solar filters whenever you're observing. You notice I have 32 millimeter plossels in this eyepiece. I'm using 26 power in these Vixen binoculars. These really aren't wide field. You're better off with a wide field image, medium to low powers, not, not a high power, because high power will, uh, you'll see the the poor seeing conditions. You are actually getting quite a bit uh, loss of seeing conditions when you're looking from a warm room outside and I will talk more about that later. Here's a 10 by 50, uh, here's my comment on, on binoculars that I use that worked really well. 10 by 50 binoculars and low power like 26 power worked really well. Some of the higher powers gave uh, worse views because you're seeing uh, you're seeing the poor seeing with higher power so you also want to close your internal heat register when you're observing. And uh, like I said, my room, in my particular room, which is a small room with uh, double plane insulated windows, except for the one that was open, stayed comfortable for 90 minutes. Here's an image through the uh, back of the telescope that I took, uh, just an afocal shot that I took through the lens of uh, sunspots. You can see some sunspots here. You can actually see that I was viewing at the time, and I was actually viewing through three tree branches at the time. I think I took it through the right uh, eyepiece there with a the camera. Here's another view. I took uh, white light, and actually you can see on the bottom right-hand side, you can see I was looking through thin clouds, and there's the sunspots. That's about the vi visual, what, what I saw visually looking out the window. I'm, I'm looking at a sharp angle, so there's probably turbulence around the house, and this is in three degrees below zero, which this kind of points out what I was doing. t mounted on the next star, 4SE, uh, photo here, uh, three below zero, four below outside, and about 70 degrees inside. Here's a, here's a photo I tried to take of the moon, at eight power, I really didn't have a high power, but I took a better shot later, and here it is, here's a 42 power uh, T-mounted, uh, processed, it's 25 frames out of 400. This is roughly the visual quality maximum you're going to probably see when observing the moon uh, from inside, at least in these conditions that I saw. I was looking at 52 power with uh, an eyepiece, so this is a little bit lower power, but this is roughly what I saw uh, under the best conditions. So that's the scene will you'll see better and worse seeing. It'll kind of blink in and out the good viewing. Probably indoor observing is better for, uh, not for groups, but for a single person uh, observing, a, uh, just to get your fix late at night when it's cold and you don't want to go outside and dig through snowdrifts to uh, place a telescope outside and set up for 20 minutes and break down for 20 minutes. And if you only have an hour, you're only observing for 20 minutes. You have good observing. In, in this case, I'm setting up in 15 seconds. I'm breaking down in 15 seconds. And in the same short hour of observing, if I only want to take an hour to get my observing fix, I'm observing most of the time. But I'm spending more time looking for brief glimpses of uh, good views. And it's a visual thing, uh, not, a, not a photographic uh, observing session. For pho photography, put your telescope outside, bring some cables inside, don't do this. I wouldn't recommend observing through a window with photography uh, you know, uh, it, as your goal because the scene conditions are going to ruin your photograph, uh, your, your long exposures or whatever. Here's a wide field shot I tried to take with my uh, jury rig shot here using a block of wood <laughs> uh, adapted for the Vixen mount there on my Nexstar 4C mount there. So you can see I was trying to take some photos. I'm not going to share those photos because they were poor. Looking at planets, planets are not a good object to view because you need a high high power view. So I wouldn't look at planets uh, 
and when I tried to look at three below zero Fahrenheit, seeing was only good maybe 3% or less, actually. Uh, looking at Jupiter, it looked like the moon. It was so blurry. It was so big, and it barely came into focus. Maybe once for a brief moment within an hour of viewing, I saw a couple bands in, in a, a moon close to the edge of the surface of Jupiter, and that was it. Uh, bitter cold temperatures will reduce the quality. The, the, a moderate temperature difference, say it's just about freezing, works a lot better than three below. The advantages are you're going to see, uh, I'm just going to give you the advantages, not the disadvantages. I could talk about this for an hour. This was actually a 20 minute or less presentation. So uh, you're going to see uh, good views, but only briefly. And you're going to have to be patient. But you'll stay, stay warm and have plenty of time to view. Uh, you can focus on a small part of the sky and uh, learn it better with uh, because that's all you can view at the time. So you're going to learn a, a small part of the sky and maybe find objects in a small part of the sky. Uh, I can observe for an hour at least without a coat when it's really bitter outside. And I got a 15 second teardown, which is also good for security. I tear down, a, my, my, all my equipment's already inside the house. You know, if I have to run somewhere else in the house to talk to somebody who needs me or something, I'm not running in the house and leaving all my equipment outside. Galaxies, I looked at Bode's Nebula in the north here. There's a picture of me looking at it and, and a wide field shot of it, but I don't have a photo of it. But I was able to see a bright galaxy. Obviously, galaxies are limited to something you can see with a small instrument. You know, so it's a bright galaxy you can view. But you can view galaxies from indoors. Uh, having a dark room to look out of helps uh, get night adapted eyes, and, and I'm able to see galaxies. So. Um, the resolution, the planetary resolution you'd require with high power isn't required. Of course, you're going to be seeing uh, bigger galaxies and using um, medium and low power telescopes in doing this type of observing. I found that star clusters are fine, uh, open clusters or, uh, you know, uh, large clusters are fine. Bright nebula like M42 is okay. Galaxies are all right if they're bright enough. The sun is uh, fine with a safe solar filter. Uh, the moon is all right. Bad targets, I would say planets would be uh, difficult and not worth it. You'd be better off going outside, uh, unless it's maybe a wide view, something like Mars and the Beehive, and you're seeing the whole field of view. Low power uh, corrects a lot of problems. You're basically limited by poor, poor seeing. Uh, maybe the best thing you'd ever see would be maybe a 7 on a scale of 1 to 10. Maybe 7 would be the best you'd ever see. Maybe 3 points less than what it would really be outside. That's, that's my guess guesstimate anyways. Double stars are difficult to split because of the difficulty in seeing. Like I couldn't see uh, the trapezium easily. Maybe three stars uh, briefly, although I was using low power and a, and a small telescope. Uh, where I could see uh, better uh, objects like that outside or with a cooled down telescope and in the cold. I also tried a modification. I, I made a long thin tube and briefly just put it on the front to uh, stop currents flowing over the front of the tube if currents are coming out of the window. I wanted to stop that turbulence and make it kind of like a long dew shield. This uh, improved seeing by maybe five, uh, 50 percent, meaning if I had say 10 percent good seeing, I'd estimate maybe it would be like 15 percent good seeing because of that, the reduction. So it would improve it, but I might only have 10 percent or 15 percent good seeing, you know, fractions out of a minute I might see 10 seconds of good seeing, you know, blinking in and out because of the poor seeing conditions. So it's it's worth it for patients and a patient viewing, but for a group viewing it might be more difficult, especially um, for some objects. Now I don't know about the moon and the sun, it would be interesting to see how that, that works. I was able to project the moon or the sun, not the moon, but the sun inside of a, uh, a room uh, once before, but that was a different type of uh, setup, which I can talk about in another presentation. Uh, so, you know, is this worth it? Is this tube, uh, long tube worth uh, doing? I think it is because uh, if there's a street light nearby and you're looking near a street light, it'll actually block out a uh, glare that's on the front of your objective of what you're using. So it's kind of worth it to actually do this anyway. It's just for uh, other reasons, if not only for the improvement of seeing, also for the improvement of uh, not having direct glare on, on a, a telescope that has an objective or corrective plate in the front. Uh, also, you want, I think, a rich field telescope like an F7 or, or faster is better than something like an F12 or 15 or something. My next R4 SE is almost worthless for a lot of viewing because I'm using such high powers. So uh, I would, I'd recommend something like uh, 
a shorter focal length telescope with medium powers. Seeing affected tests, uh, this shows that I had less seeing, it seemed to have less, uh, seeing it was worse in colder weather than in better weather. As you can see, I said only 1 to 5% of the time, 3 below 0, but there was 10 degrees winds outside, uh, 32 degrees, I was I was getting uh, 10 to 15 percent fair seeing. I should call it maybe good seeing. On a scale of say 1 to 10, it was a 5, 5 or 6 maybe, you know, best. Cold weather is better for cameras outside, but obviously it's not better for us because the human environment, what makes us comfortable is what we have to look through. We'd be better off in space without an environment, but if we were in space, uh, our eyes would burst out of our heads and our internal organs would rupture, so we can't view from space. So we have to put up with the weather. Well, the more weather we have to put up with, the worse our seeing. The, the more difficult the weather, the, the better our seeing, and that's the case here. So if you want better seeing, you got to go out and brave the cold and dress up and, and deal with all the, the cold weather out there. If you want um, more comfort, you're going to sacrifice on the seeing, but you'll actually be able to see something, you'll get your fix. Here's my little uh, max power rule that I thought of, which is basically uh, the maximum power is roughly uh, about the temperature in Fahrenheit outside, down to about 10 power. 8 or 10 power, you can use it almost any temperature because there's such a low resolute, uh, so uh, small magnification of the uh, issues that you're seeing in the in the sky. So you're not going to notice much at 10 power or 8 power with optics being poor or your uh, conditions being poor. So this is what I found generally. Uh, you might be able to be, able to be 10, 10 power higher or lower depending on how bad the conditions are outside. So this, this isn't a hard fast rule, it's just something that I noted. I wanted to try to create a rule for those who like equations and rules. Here's uh, the types of objects, again a summary. Uh, you want a lightweight telescope, wide field, sealed tube. You want a view from the back. You want uh, low powers to moderate powers. Uh, small telescopes. Binoculars are better because you can see better. Your eyes will compensate for poor seeing by having two eyes to look through and two uh, visual scopes to look through. Uh, and like I said, you can look at the faint fuzzy star clusters, solar, the moon. Somebody in the presentation asked me about variable stars. I don't know what to say about that. I don't observe variable stars, so I can't really comment much on that. Seeing does create, poor seeing creates flicker, so it might, if flicker would interfere with your variable star observing, you might not be as happy looking at variable stars uh, if the seeing is affected that much by your uh, indoor observing. For moderate cold, the planetary might look okay, or at least wide field. If you're really bitter cold, if you want to look at a planet and get a quick fix, uh, get a grab and go, a telescope. You're going to only say you're going to look at a couple planets out there, run out there and uh, brave the cold, look at the planets, and then come on in and look look at the wide field stuff from indoors and enjoy the uh, more moderate environment. That's my quick presentation. Uh, I had a demonstration and uh, made a few comments in the presentation, but that's it for now. So I'm going to stop and uh, stop this recording.